Item 20. Yes, AB 1322. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senators. I'll begin by agreeing to accept amendments in the Senate Appropriations Committee that would do the following. There's three points. Number one, as part of a salon or barbershop's establishment license under the Department of Consumer Affairs, uh, will authorize a salon or barbershop as an option to serve, not sell, beverages to legal customers up to the limit prescribed in the bill, which is basically one serving, one drink. Authorize the Board of Barbering and Cosmetology under the Department of Consumer Affairs to enforce the provisions of this bill and to take appropriate enforcement actions against an establishment that violates the provisions of the bill. Lastly, the last amendment authorize a local government to restrict or prohibit the serving of alcohol in a salon or barber establishment. This measure allows beauty salons and barber shops to serve beer or wine to their customers without having to obtain a special license or permit. Many shops throughout California offer their customers alcoholic beverages. In fact, it's, a, it's been a custom for years and it's a growing custom without charge as a part of their services. However, barbershops and beauty salons are not currently allowed to offer alcohol technically without an ABC license, which is why we need to update the regulations. My bill allows these shops to offer beer or wine to their customers without having to obtain a special license or permit, similar to long-standing laws allowing limousines or hot air balloon companies to do so. The bill requires a business to be in good standing with the Board of Barbering and Cosmetology before it's allowed to serve. Customers may only be offered one drink during normal business hours and not after 10 o'clock in the evening. With me is uh, Joe Lang. He was. There he is. There's Joe. There's Joe. Joe represents uh, a, a, a dry bar, a, uh, a statewide company with many locations. Joe. Mr. Chairman, members, <clears throat> Joe Lang representing Dry Bar Incorporated. It's a uh, new business model that has so far been quite successful in the state, um, allowing for their patrons to come in and in a 30-minute time period or up to an hour um, have a styling for special events for, to allow their the blow-drying of the hair and styling. Um, it's appearing and it's becoming a trend in, in this business to have this business model where, where it's a more convenient setting for the customers to appear. As a part of their business model, they have, un until recently, offered their customers a glass of wine or a glass of champagne, and not knowing that, in fact, there is a provision of the law that prohibits you from serving, even free, without charge, alcoholic beverages if the general public is allowed to uh, enter the premises at any time. Uh, this bill simply clarifies it. The same exemption has been granted to limousine services, to hot air balloons. Um, and I think we're trying to solve what is sort of a common sense problem here that people don't understand. The chair and the committee have, have brought forward um, issues, I think, that are appropriate to address, which is to make sure that the licensees who are doing this have, in fact, uh, understand how to comply with the law and make sure it's a condition of their license to do compliance. And I, I think we're prepared and support addressing that in this committee today um, in order to get that clarified. Okay, and thank you uh, for uh, working with the committee and uh, uh, with the amendments that would uh, allow for significant oversight uh, in this piece of legislation. And so thank you for your willingness, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Daly, uh, to work uh, with the committee in that. Are there any other witnesses in support? Uh, witnesses in opposition, please come forward. Yeah. And Mr. Daly, you, you, you understand that these are committee amendments, correct? Correct. Very good. Okay. Correct. All right. Correct. I'm correct. happy to take them today if that's yeah. the... Noted. That Thank works. you. That I appreciate. I appreciate you working with the committee on that. Yes. 
thank you. Uh, Bruce Lee Livingston, Executive Director of Alcohol Justice, the Alcohol Industry Watchdog Organization. Um, you're all familiar with the bill. I just want to point out that I've not, not seen in an analysis yet the number of venues that would be opened up in California. Currently, we have 70,000 um, ABC licenses in California. Our estimate is that there are 30,000 beauty salons and barbershops that would all of a sudden, without a license, without training, with children present, uh, would be allowed, with no enforcement, would be allowed to serve alcohol while somebody's blow drying your hair, perhaps? Uh, are they really monitoring your alcohol service? 30,000 new venues with, that's a 30% increase in venues in California at least. Um, this is a special interest bill for Dry Bar and 18.8, uh, which is a men's salon that has beer on tap. Um, they're both huge. They are, these are not mom and pop barbershops and beauty salons. Uh, the business model of Dry Bar is this is a, this is a bar that they want to be resembling. It looks like a bar. Uh, the name of their uh, blow dries, whatever they call them, are the Straight Up, the Manhattan, the Cosmo, the Mai Tai, the Cosmo Tai, the Southern Comfort, the Dirty Martini. These are blow dries. They have parties for young women. Um, wine served can be 40%, uh, 40 proof. They can make mixed drinks out of that. They want to turn these into bars. This is another sneaky way to get bars without a license into places throughout the entire state of California. Uh, you have a package in front of you. This is a $159 million valuation organ, uh, company. Your own uh, analysis has said that this is for the small people who don't want to be busted. Listen, if they want to serve alcohol at a beauty shop or a salon, go ahead. Get a license. This was called the Dry Bar Bill when it was signed by Governor O'Malley in Maryland last year. It was called the Dry Bar Bill. Check the Google News on that. And it's a special interest bill. We oppose it vigorously. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, um, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Reverend Butler from the California Council on Alcohol Problems. We, too, oppose this bill for many of the reasons that have already been uh, mentioned, so I won't <clears throat> repeat all of those. But <clears throat> we do have a concern that, the first of all, the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board that has responsibility to monitor and regulate alcohol uh, marketing, distribution, consumption, manufacturing within our state is going to be left out of this entire process. <clears throat> Further, we look at this and wonder what will be the impact of some, and I think the number may be closer to 40,000 uh, barbershops and beauty salons in the state, many of which may be located in neighborhoods where people are taking their young children for a haircut, and instead of sitting there and getting um, a lollipop at the end of the day, they simply watch adults drink and consume alcohol while they're waiting. How many more venues do we need in California to serve alcohol, especially if they are unlicensed and unmonitored? This is just, we believe, a bad idea and we hope that you will vote no on this and allow those few companies or uh, businesses that want to go through the process to get a license to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend, for your testimony. Uh, any other witnesses in opposition? Uh, comments, concerns, and readiness from the members? Yes, Dr. Hernandez. Yeah, thank you very much. So, I mean, I'm feeling a little bit better with the amendments I'm just looking at that the chair has recommended. Um, it's not the fact that alcohol or beer is going to be given at a salon. It's the oversight for me. So, I mean, the concern I have is mm -hmm. the department that it should be under, whether it's ABC, and my understanding it's under the Board of Barbering and Cosmetology. But more importantly, where are the resources available for this particular board? Where, what is that cost going to be? And do they have the resource to be able to go out and either find and to look and to maintain to make sure that, and do they have a history of doing this? Because the Board of Barbering and Cosmetology, I mean, they, I don't know if they really know how to deal with alcoholic beverages. So that's my only concern. I still have a lot of questions. And if, is this the proper agency to have them under or should it be under 
uh, an agency that has the ability to enforce as well. Because my concern is what if it's, it's not just one beer, what if somebody's going to start giving out four beers for free, five beers, and then they're going to start charging it on the back end, even though it's free, but they're going to charge it by increasing the cost of the haircut. So just, I have some, I have a lot more questions than I have answers, you know. I think the bill is a due pass to appropriations, and I think uh, there are some of the other answers in terms of enforcement. If there's a financial uh, obligation, it would be dealt in, in the fiscal uh, in the fiscal committee, and this is not the committee where uh, we will be addressing the fiscal component. So, so I, I understand that, but is the board of barbering and cosmetology the, the appropriate board to, and do they have the expertise to be able to do oversight? That's that that's a policy question that I can ask. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, can I make a suggestion? No, that it no perhaps we go to business and professions. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, um, Mr. Lane. Mr. Chair and members, I think the, the right questions are being asked here. The, the concept, I think, behind your committee amendments is that you create sort of a dual uh, cooperative enforcement process. The Board of, of Barbering and Cosmetology does issue licenses to the individuals who are in this business. I think the concept here is to make a violation of this provision a potential license issue with regard to the person's license in addition to provide local government with the notice so that they can work hand in hand in those what we think will be relatively small cases. What we have found in pursuing this bill that there are actually thousands of people thousands of places right now who do this as a matter of course have no idea that they're violating the law and this is simply a way to provide a mechanism for them not to be in violation of the law but to make sure that there's proper enforcement and notice as well but that i don't i don't know if that answered my question it seemed like he's talking to you and i asked a question he didn't even have the courtesy to look me in the face or the eye when he to answer me but regardless um i mean still is this the appropriate place or entity to oversee, oversee oversight? Sir, and as I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, the chairman called me up, so I was just trying to make sure that I was responsive. In this particular case, since they are the licensing body at the state level, and by referencing a violation of this provision in their license enforcement authority, we think that's probably the appropriate place for it to be done because they actually will pro provide licensing oversight of these establishments by making a condition of their license to in fact comply with this law and then dovetailing it with the local government licensing capability. I think we create that sort of magical way of having both local and state government work together. So we do think it's the right agency because they do license them. Very good, Mr. McGuire. Thank you so much. And uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you uh, to the chair and to the committee for working on this bill and do appreciate the author bringing this forward. Uh, the question I have is on uh, the third uh, point on the uh, amendments that are being brought forward, authorize the local government to restrict or prohibit the serving of alcohol in a salon or barber establishment. Does that mean uh, a local city council board of supervisors would need to be able to establish an ordinance uh, restricting or allowing alcohol sales uh, at these establishments? Um, Senator McGuire, actually local governments right now do have in their zoning law capability, they do have the ability to regulate with ABC, on ABC licenses. With the ABC. The but this doesn't go through ABC is what my concern is. Right. So, so the way this would work is local governments have the ability to, in fact, regulate consumption on premises at the local level. So the idea here is to dovetail that local authority dealing with consumption, whether it's right. sold or for free, with the board's ability to make a licensure requirement that they comply with the one drink rule. So just, uh, I want to take this a step further. So uh, when I served on uh, Board of Supervisors and or on our local city council, um, we would get a referral. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the local governing board, whether it's the city council, Board of Supervisors, would have an opportunity to be able to chime in if they support or not. So I, what I'm looking for is that, so then would that be part of the uh, Board of Barbering and Cosmetology that would need to be able to do the referral 
Uh, and then the other piece that uh, I see in the licensing is that you would have a sign. Uh, up in the establishment talking about a new alcohol license may potentially be granted and, um, when we have a change of ownership or uh, when they're going to start serving alcohol. So I just want to be able to get a better understanding on how that would work. So, Sarah McGuire, and I, I think I, I don't necessarily want to preempt the author on this, but I think the approach here is that local governments would be notified. The responsibility on the premises would be to notify the local government that, in fact, they intend on participating in compliance with this law. So local government would get the notification. Local government has right now the ability to approve the types of locations where alcoholic beverages can be consumed. So if, if you work that together so that local government knows that this is going on and has the ability to address it through their zoning regulation, and then you have a state agency who also is responsible for making sure that compliance with the one drink rule occurs, you'll have sort of the best combination of, of local government regulating, which they can do right now, the consumption, and then the state agency making sure that that con consumption doesn't exceed one drink. And this will be my uh, final item, Mr. Chair. I, and um, I, I think that on the concept, um, can see how this could potentially work. I, I think where, just being candid, where I have some challenges is that when we're asking for the Board of Barbering and Cosmeto Cosmetology, which is focused on one industry, then taking on the issue of alcohol, I just have some concerns in regards to, in particular, the interface with local government. Um, in uh, taking on an issue that is out of what their traditional purview has been. So, um, again, I think I could potentially get there related to the concept, um, but have some concerns in regards to is this um, fully cooked to be able to involve local government and if there are concerns, how that would work. But that's just a, a concern. Yes, Mr. Block. Yeah, I, I share the concerns expressed by Senator McGuire and Senator Hernandez. Um, I, I just need to say I'm not concerned about an adult having one beverage while they're getting their hair done. Um, I am concerned about monitoring and enforcement mechanisms. So just on the street, when this happens, who is it who's going to be patrolling the beauty salons and barber shops to make sure this isn't being abused? Here's the dilemma, Senator. Right now in California, there are thousands of establishments offering champagne or one beer to their customers. It's happening right now. And the ABC is in the position of responding to complaints and then sending a letter to the operator saying, you're not supposed to do this. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much the situation today uh, in our state. It's very common in women's hair salons for a glass of champagne to be offered. Um, I think this bill helps the current situation by making it crystal clear, no more than one glass. No more than one glass. And if you violate that, you risk your, your license. I, I your appreciate license the comments, generated. but that's not really responsive to the question. So who is it who's going to be patrolling the barber shops and beauty salons to make sure it's just one glass and that the 20-year-old isn't getting served? Yeah. Senator Block, if I may, um, I think that there are three agencies that will be doing that. The number one agency charged for doing this is the ABC, and they are doing it now. And in fact, they are serving warning letters on establishments who are doing this now in violation of the current law. Number two, you have the Department of the Board of, of Cosmetology and Barbering, who now will have added to their enforcement priority an assurance that people are, for their license on an annual basis, complying with this law. Thirdly, and where the local government comes in, is that the ABC works with local jurisdictions and they hold uh, gatherings with local government officials and law enforcement on an annual basis. They will be working. The front line of defense is the ABC, the department. Locals will also, however, have the ability to enforce this as well. Okay, allow me to express a concern and then, then I'll stop. Um, you know, I had a bill last year that dealt with a monitoring of nursing homes and enforcement of nursing home rules, and we found that only nursing home inspections, which used to be done once every five years, once every year, now being done once every five years because there just aren't enough inspectors. Now, 
if we pass this law and it goes public that anybody, any of these establishments, uh, um, barber or beauty salons can have alcohol, uh, where I get my hair cut now, nobody offers me a beer or a glass of wine or anything else, but to stay competitive, they will have to. They will have to. Um, so there will be a plethora of more establishments offering beer and wine. I am certain of that because they will have to stay competitive with those who do because now it's legal if we pass this. Some people will do it even though it's illegal. I grant you that others are doing it now, but not everybody will. A lot of people obey the law. Um, this will require a great deal more, uh, geometrically more folks on the street enforcing this if it's serious, if we really want to keep it to one drink and keep it to only adults. I don't see the state has the capacity to do that at this time. Um, so while I'm not concerned about one adult having one alcoholic beverage, I am concerned about other ramifications of the law. All right, so here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, there's, there's a lot of unreadiness on the committee. And so uh, I know, uh, Mr. Daly, that you're committed to the bill. Uh, I'd like for, to, with your, with your permission, to to downshift a little bit and to uh, not bring the bill up for a vote, but to have uh, your staff uh, work with the committee uh, in trying to craft additional uh, legislation that will put some teeth in it and be able to address uh, some of the concerns uh, from the members because uh, from the testimony present, from the questions and the inquiries from the members, there's a lot of unreadiness uh, on both sides. So I will just pull the bill back and allow you to continue to work to address some of the concerns uh, that will make the members uh, ready for uh, a vote on the bill. Mr. Chair, that I respect okay? that completely. The questions that have uh, been uh, uh, asked um, are all very logical. Current enforcement mechanisms in the state today are a little bit unclear and, and I don't think work very well. And if we're going to make a shift, we need to make sure it's uh, it's proper and it's uh, and it's efficient. Okay. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay.